album design and wall art sales just got easier. This year, Fundy Designer brought you the fastest and most professional album design software in the world. Now, it brings you the easiest to use sales software, whether presenting in person or from across the world using Skype or Google+. Easily guide your clients through their slideshow, image selects, album design, and wall art layouts. Design on professional stock rooms, a room from your client's home, or project a size to help them visualize their story hanging on the walls. Create client orders with album upgrades, wall art, and prints in just a few clicks. Working from home, your studio, or across the world, it's never been so simple to boost your studio sales. Client sales with confidence. Fundy Designer V7. Download the free trial at fundy.com. Got a little tiny little camera room here, Jamie. <laughs> You know, it's funny how you can make things work, and this all came about as a total accident, because when I first started, I only had enough money to buy four strobes. Okay. And so, um, traditionally, the studios that I'd worked for before, they had done the, you know, the background light where the cord was cut to the slit in the background, which always created problems of vignetting in the background on a hot spot in the center, and that was very popular back in that time period. Uh -huh. But um, I developed a lighting concept that is actually how I think and photograph both indoors, outdoors, and on location. And, and one thing that Mary and I teach is this simple lighting concept, and it's really kind of so basic. Um, and this will work not only in a small space, but it works in a huge space. You can set this up for proms or dances or families or anything. It works everywhere. And how, what I do is, so my main light is F11. I like using a three by four or a four by six foot softbox. Um, and this brand, these are Larson or Sweet Light. What I love about them is that they're the shallowest depth from the back to the front. And very important in a small space because I've tried other brands where it, the, the softbox actually sticks out about this far into the shot. So those aren't going to work. These are fantastic for working in small spots. So highly recommend those. Um, and so if I've got the main light firing here at F11 in this position, I have a fill light. Now I prefer to use a fill light versus a reflector. Now we have the modeling light on here just for the video, but normally I have the modeling light off like this when, we're, when I'm photographing. That way I can see the pattern of light on the face from the main light. Um, I, use, I like a fill light because the subject can move anywhere in this range all around through here and still have the exact same amount of density on the shadow side. and even if it's a large group, it, the shadow side will be even from here to here. If I were to use a reflector, which is very popular these days, the reflector would have to move, every time I move the main light, I'd have to remove the reflector. And normally only about 30% of a reflector is efficient in returning light. So in order, if I were photographing a large group, I would need a huge reflector right. to try to get enough even consistency in those shadow areas doesn't work for me. Also, I don't like children being able to have to always reset them to the center. Okay. So I can, in this concept, I can photograph if the child's over here and they're doing something crazy, I can photograph and still get the expression and get the image, Okay. which is great. What makes this unique and different are these two lights that I've bounced off of the ceiling that are aimed kind of back toward the camera. What I'm doing is I'm turning the ceiling into a softbox, which is returning diffused light. And as we know, diffused light has no shadow. So I have no shadows except for where they're supposed to be around my feet. At some point in time, as you can tell with Carter, children get restless, their hands kind of move. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a big fan personally for our brand of the whimsical of just letting a child be a child. Um, so I like to, again, use something that will allow the child to, to act favorably one way or another to what we're doing and keep everything posed. So I'm going to use a little sticker in Carter's hand. Carter, do you like stickers? Can you hold that one for me? Can you hold it with the, both hands? That's about as hard as it is to pose a child's fingers. And look how cute they are. And no matter what he does, they're going to be amazing. Hey, Carter, can you put this toey this way? I tell you what, I'm gonna switch a little bit. Let's put that toey out like that, okay? Can you stay, whoa, don't fall down, Carter. Okay, stay right there, okay? Don't fall down, Carter. I'm gonna switch now to remote control. And this is also something great. When your camera mounts on the tripod mount, you can go from horizontal to vertical in seconds. Hey, Carter. Hey, Carter, listen, I'm gonna ask you a question. Can you hear the birds? Listen. Perfect. 
Okay, this is right there is my series. Wall portrait, pensive expression, smile, and illustrative looking down. I love to make sure the children's feet are crossed. Now, other than moving the main light around to that side, I primarily keep the main light for the majority of the session on the same side, just for continuity purposes. When Mary goes, to, if Mary decides to sell an album or a panel, I like the light to the main light on the subject's face to all come from the same direction. It gives it a little bit more of a refined look in a panel versus a um, more scrapbooky kind of feel of different images put together. Hey, Carter. <gasps> Whoa, what are you doing? Are your feet falling apart? Hey, Carter, can you cover up your ears like this? Can you cover up your mouth? Can you cover up your eyes? <laughs> Silly. Can you do like this? Can we show your mean face? Show me your happy face. Show me your sad face. <laughs> Good job. All right, stand up from there, bud. All right, so we're gonna do one more thing and then we'll be all done. Can you sit down on the ground for me? Can you sit crisscross applesauce? How you do that? Let me show you. Okay, watch. Boom. Here, can you put both feet like this? Can you put your hands around your knees like this? Hold on real tight, okay? That's great. So here's an example of how I can work off the side and create a really long, amazing look. Hey, Carter, what's on your toe? Is there something on your toe? Can you make your big toe stick up like that? Wow, can you make the other one do it? Yay! Can you, can you hide your head all the way like this? Hey, Carter, Oop, leave your head down. Put your head back down. <gasps> Jamie, what I love about this is simplicity. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even when you just had them seated and you know, you only have, oh, <laughs> we're gonna go get some lollipops, I think. <laughs> lollipops are very important to this process. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing, you know, if you make a promise to a child, you better make sure you keep it because if you forget, they certainly won't. <laughs> But yeah, I like keeping everything very simple and classic and timeless. The more, for our brand, the more things I have in the photo for indoor portraits, the more chances I have for there to be objections in the sales room. And this is kind of a great example too. You know, it, and, and this was totally arranged so that I would have the infant, um, he wasn't quite sitting up as easy, he's about nine months old, mm -hmm. but the triangle composition and the pretty lighting allows them to move anywhere you want to. I love that. And that's what we do, we highlight, now that position changes depending on the season. So we, we switch our oil paintings out a little bit um, depending on what is the next thing that we have coming up as far as um, time of year. Okay, great. <laughs>